What's up guys, I'm Nomadic, and today I wanted to take a step back from the beat making videos to go back to the MPC for a second for a tutorial. So a long time ago I made a video called how to record your MPC into Ableton Live, and ever since then I've been using Ableton a lot, so I kind of have a new way of approaching it. It's still pretty similar, but I have a new approach that I kind of wanted to create a video about. So the inspiration for making this video was actually fairly recently. I went back to my old MPC 1000 right here, um, and I just found a lot of old drums that I had made six years ago. And a lot of those drums actually sounded really great and I wanted to make a drum kit out of them. So I actually went through the process of recording my MPC back into Ableton Live. And I figured, you know, I have a new kind of easier method of doing that in the, the computer and I figured I might as well just make a tutorial about it just to update you guys on the best way to record your MPC. Now I know I said the drum kit was gonna be finished this week. I'm telling you, just give me like five more days and I'm gonna be putting this thing out. It's, it's sounding really, really good. It's really unique. It's a really interesting drum kit because there's gonna be classic sounds that came out of the MPC, but also I did some manipulation to give the drums kind of this like modern uh, bang to them. So it's, it's, it's a combination of two, two different sound sets. So it's really interesting. So stay tuned for that because that's gonna be crazy. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have any questions and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already with the notification bell hit. So without further ado, let's get down to business. So in order to record your MPC, you really only need two things. You just need a sound card like this, which is actually, this is the same sound card I had in my last video. I've been using this sound card for like, I don't know, like six, six eight years. I need a new one, honestly, because this is super old, but any sound card will do. You just need to make sure that you have two inputs on the front or on the back, whatever it may be. And you just need two quarter inch cables. So quarter inch cable looks like this. You either have uh, TRS, which has three bands or TS, doesn't really matter, one or the other, looks like this. And you just need this and the sound card. So like I said, you just want a sound card with two inputs on it. So you wanna make sure that you can connect this into your MPC as so and you want to make sure that the outputs of your MPC also have the same connection so on the MPC 1000 the, it, it all has quarter inch outputs so all I really need to do is plug it in like this I have the red one as the right right input right output so I'm just gonna look on the back I'm gonna have the red one going into the stereo out so right and then this one to go here and that's really it, that's all you need to do. All right, so once you have everything fired up, once your MPC is turned on, uh, you just go right into Ableton, and I don't have anything here right now, everything's a totally blank slate. Uh, nothing is going on. So if you haven't actually, I'm just gonna interject right now. If you haven't seen my Ableton series, be sure to check that out, because in the first few episodes, I talk about everything in terms of setup and stuff like that, so if you don't really know what's going on here, check that out, but for now, uh, just make sure that you have one audio track set up. So this is all you need, one audio track. Master, personally, I actually like to have this thing called the glue compressor. I like to throw the glue compressor on just because I feel like it gives the, the, the MPC a little bit more of a punch. I like this preset bass low extender, so I just like to throw it onto the master so you can hear it. If you hit play start, you should be able to hear it. If you change this to monitor in, you should be able to hear it. So I'm just going to turn it up so you can hear it. And personally, I like to record, I like to have the recording peak no louder than negative 12, negative 10. But honestly, this is just my personal taste. There's really no answer to this. It's entirely up to you and how you like it to sound. Because there's this uh, this glue compressor on, you can actually drive it pretty hard if you want to. And if you have the this thing, it's called a soft clipper. Soft clipper basically doesn't allow your signal to go into the red. The red meaning that it clips. It kind of just stops it right there. But it, but it gives the sound kind of a little bit more of a pleasing pleasing tone to it. So if you have a soft clipper on, you can drive it pretty hard, and it'll sound pretty good. That's actually how I made a lot of the drums in this kit. So that's what you can do to kind of hear what it sounds like. But once you have that down, you want to separate it into the different tracks. You want to have your kick, you want to have your snare, you want to have your hi-hat. 
So the first thing you really do is you look at your MPC and I'm looking at this BPM right now on the screen. I'm not going to bring the camera over because I don't think I need to. But the screen says 81. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the BPM and I'm going to type 81. So now that the BPMs are matched, really all you need to do is ask yourself how long is the sequence, right? I'm looking at the screen. The sequence is 8 bars, okay? So all you really need to do if you switch the screen, you go down here, adjust this so you know how long it's supposed to be. So now you know, 8 bars, okay. So this entire sequence is 8 bars long. So I'm going to just copy this over depending on how many tracks I have. Here I have 4 tracks. I have sample track, I have kick track, snare track, and hi-hat track. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate this 3 times. And then I'm just going to record them all separately. So in the MPC, I'm just going to solo the sample, which is this. And then really all you do is you just click record. Where is it? You click record. So now it's recording. And then you hit play start, so it starts in the beginning. And you let it play all the way through. Okay, so that's it, right? It played over eight bars. So you hit stop, and then really all you need to do, switch this back. Really all you need to do is double click the, the audio file so you can edit it. And then you just find the beginning, because you know when you hit play start, it started at the first beat. So all you have to do is find this arrow here, and you double click it and you right click you say set 1.1.1 here and you know that it's going to start right at the beginning and you know that this is played at 81 and you know the 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 computer knows that it was recorded at 81 so all you have to do is set it to be exactly eight bars long which it's doing right here and that's it so you just shorten it and that's it you're done <laughs> that's one track so we have the sample in there that's timed properly. So now let's do another track. So let's do the kick now, right? So I'm gonna go to kick. So now I'm gonna record the kick, right? Doing the same exact thing. So I'm gonna hit the record button. Play start. Making sure it goes past eight bars so I get the whole thing. I'm watching the screen on the NPC to make sure it doesn't go past eight bars. Or I'm making sure it does go past eight bars, my bad. Okay, so that was it. That was eight bars, right? So again, same thing. Go in here, double click, set 1.1.1 here. You don't have to do any warping because you match the BPMs and you just shorten it, that's it. Okay, next snare. So the snare is different because the snare doesn't actually start on the first beat. So you have to kind of adjust it until it sounds right. So it's not, this is the, the thing with this method because you're not using the MIDI sync, it's not going to be perfectly lined up with everything else. You kind of have to do it manually. But personally, I think it's just way easier to not mess around with MIDI sync. So same thing, record, play start. So now we're doing the snare. And again, I'm going to stop this as soon as it passes 8 bars. Okay, now I'm done. So, I'm just going to line it up with the kick, because I know, I know how it's supposed to sound, you know? Like that's supposed to hit a little sooner, so I'm just going to shift this over. It's a little bit off. Sounds good. 
and that's it. Shorten it down. Done. All right. Hi hats. So this one's easy because it starts on the first beat. So same thing. Record. Play start. Let it run all the way through. Okay, done. Same deal, double click. Set 1.1 here. And that's it. Make sure everything is right where it needs to be. And that's it, let's hear how it sounds. You go that's it it's pretty simple hopefully you guys found some value out of that video it was pretty easy for me to make so if you guys want to see more content like this just drop a comment below so i could get a good sense of how you guys are feeling and as always be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and be on the lookout for that npc drum kit too it's going to be coming next week so be on the lookout for that and i'll see you later